Welcome to Dr. O'Donovan Medicine Made Easy, where in this video you're going to learn about three key things. Firstly, three reasons why some individuals with diabetes develop foot problems. Secondly, three important complications that can occur. And thirdly, 12 top tips for good foot care to help prevent some of these issues from arising. Now, as you'll probably know, diabetes is a condition where the level of sugar in the blood is not controlled effectively by the body. These uncontrolled sugar levels can cause damage to the body, including the feet, in a number of ways. Now, there are three key ways in which diabetes can cause foot issues. The first is poor circulation, which can be in both the large as well as the small blood vessels of the body. This is called ischemia, and it occurs when the large blood vessels or arteries have their inner walls covered by a fatty substance, which causes them to narrow. This means that there's less room for the blood to flow down to the foot. There may also be changes to the small blood vessels in the feet as well, which can affect your toes, and smoking often makes this problem much worse. Now, a good blood supply is essential to maintain healthy skin and tissues, and also to heal any open wounds, and if you've got diabetes, then a crude blood supply check can be carried out relatively easily by feeling for pulses in the foot, and this should be carried out routinely by the health professional who checks your feet. The second way that diabetes can cause problems with your feet is due to impaired sensation, and this is known medically as neuropathy. This is where the nerves in the foot and sometimes the lower leg have been damaged by diabetes. This means that you may be unable to feel sharp objects or to tell the difference between hot and cold temperatures. The third issue that can lead to foot problems are changes in the foot's shape. This is likely to occur in association with the reduced sensation or neuropathy. The nerves controlling your muscles may stop working effectively and this can result in clawing of the toes. The balls of your feet may also become more prominent, and this can cause a change in the way that you stand and walk, causing abnormal pressure areas and calluses to form. So now that we've covered these three important mechanisms for how diabetes can cause foot issues, well, what complications can arise? Well, the most common issue that can arise are skin infections. People who've got diabetes are often at higher risk of foot infections because they may not realize they've developed an infection until it's already widespread. Now, you might have an infection if you've noticed a change in the color of your skin, for example. So white skin may go a bright pink or red color and brown or black skin may become darker. Similarly, the infected area may throb and be very painful but you should be aware that this may not be the case if you've got decreased sensation or neuropathy. You may also notice swelling, which may mean that it becomes difficult to move the infected area. The infected area may also feel hot to touch, and there may be a weeping yellow-green matter called pus. If these wounds or infections don't heal properly, then you may be at risk of the second complication, and that is a diabetic foot ulcer. This is where a wound on your foot, normally caused by trauma, has not healed properly. Diabetic foot ulcers often develop within a callus on the pressure side to the foot, with a circular, punched out appearance being typical. It's often painless, which can lead to a delay in the presentation to a health professional. Finally, you should be aware of an important complication, which is relatively rare, called Charcot foot. Charcot foot is a complication of diabetes that occurs in those with peripheral neuropathy. When neuropathy is present, the bones in the foot become weakened and can fracture more easily, and this is commonly as a result of a minor injury. As the neuropathy is present, the pain often goes unnoticed, so further damage can occur because the person continues to weight bear on the foot. This can lead to severe deformities of the foot, and early diagnosis and treatment is absolutely vital, as Charcot's foot can be extremely disabling. So finally and importantly, how can you try and prevent foot problems secondary to diabetes from occurring in the first place? Well, let's cover 12 top tips. The first and most important tip is to try to do all that you can to maintain good control of your blood sugar levels. Remember, prevention is always better than cure, and it's very important that you don't smoke. The second is to try and ensure that you have annual foot checks. Once a year, both feet should be checked by someone who's trained in diabetic foot care. This might be a chiropodist at the health centre that you're registered to. They should also assess the circulation and sensation in both feet during this check. Number three is something you can do at home, and these are daily foot checks. You may be unaware of an injury to your feet, and therefore an essential part of your daily routine must include a foot check. Next is thinking carefully about the socks that you wear. Natural fibres such as cotton or wool are preferable, and your socks should be changed ideally every day. On a related note, choosing good footwear is also essential. Try to ensure that your shoes have got a wide round deep toe box and compare the shape of your toes with that of the shoe. A lace or buckle to fasten the shoe is best, but Velcro straps are acceptable if you've got difficulties with laces or buckles. A quarter inch space between the end of your longest toe and the end of your shoe is ideal. 
If your feet swell, take care not to lace, buckle or fasten the shoe too tightly. Other important things to consider when choosing the shoe are the height of the heel, which should ideally be not more than one inch, and leather uppers are preferred. If possible, you should have your feet measured before buying shoes. Tip six is to be careful around hot surfaces or objects. If you've got neuropathy, then your feet may not be able to tell hot from cold. And it's advisable not to use hot water bottles or to warm your feet in front of a fire because burns can occur which may not heal as easily. So now those were six of the tips that you can try do to keep your feet healthy. But what are the six things you should not do? Well, first is to not ignore any problems with your feet that you're not sure about. If there's distinct colour changes, any swelling, pain, heat or other abnormality, you should seek professional help immediately. You should also not use razor blades or sharp implements to remove hard skin. Leave this to the trained health professionals such as the chiropodists. It's also advisable to avoid using plasters designed to remove corns or warts. These can contain acid which is harmful to your skin. Now, if you have diabetes, you should also avoid walking around barefoot. This is because you may step on a sharp object, be unable to feel that it's damaged the skin on your foot, and therefore this may lead to an infection. Don't smoke, this can add to blood vessel damage, and finally, don't wash your feet in strong disinfectants. Remember, if you're aware of any colour change, excess heat, pain, swelling, change in foot shape, or fluid of any type, or injury to the foot that you're concerned about, please contact your doctor or the podiatry service. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please remember to like the video, leave me a comment if you've got any other thoughts on how diabetes impacts you or your foot care, I'd love to hear from you and subscribe to the channel for weekly medical education videos if you haven't done so already. Please also check out the references and resources that I use to make this video which can be found in the description box. Finally, I do have to stress that this is designed as an educational video, it's not a clinical advice video, and for legal reasons please read the full disclaimer in the description box of this video. Thank you for watching, and until next time, bye.